videos that I typically do on my channel have been of me mainly walking in this neighborhood that I'm part of. And while the walking is really good for me and I have a lot of fun doing it, I've always been interested in seeing how I can increase the demand on my body through something simple like walking. And one of the ways that I've looked into doing that before has been through an activity called rucking. And really rucking is just to add some weight to, you know, or on your body by using something like a book bag. Typically there are, there are backpacks that you can get that are specialized for rucking, but they cost a lot of money. And if you know my saying, sort of like, don't optimize before getting into the habit, I'm not going to spend, you know, over $200 on a rucking backpack with some weights to then maybe just stop doing it. So fortunately, I have a, a book bag here with me that's pretty heavy duty. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty robust and I think it holds some amount of weight. So that's pretty good. And I'm going to show it to you guys in a minute. But before we get into that, let me just quickly go up. I just pulled up some websites here and we'll quickly just talk about the benefits of rucking. So... It says that rucking can improve strength, endurance, and general fitness levels across multiple domains. It has shown to improve muscle power, endurance, and strength in older adults. Another benefit is improved balance, improved brain function, including memory, cognition, sleep, and stress management. And then on some other website, goruck.com, it says, you know, it's simple. Anyone can do it. It gets you outside. It's active resistance training. You can burn up to three times more calories than just normal walking. It's good for your back and it improves posture. And it's also good just for social fitness because oftentimes people do it in groups. And so let me show you the book bag I'm gonna be using. So this is actually just a work book bag that I got at my office. And like I said, it's pretty robust. This is actually one of the first book bags I ever got when I started working. And I'm just gonna be starting off with 10 pounds. So I just took off one of the plates from the barbell that you've probably seen in earlier videos. And I'm hoping this would be like a nice start. But I'm pretty excited for this because I already enjoy walking. I enjoy getting out there. So I feel like just adding a simple weight will just add, you know, give me so many added benefits to something that I already enjoy doing. So really excited to continue making the videos. Today will be the first one and I'll probably continue doing rucking. If I don't do rucking, I'll mention it in the video. And if I do, I'll also mention it in the video. And hopefully over time I can, you know, progressively overload and get to a nice solid weight. Just don't want to start off, you know, too heavy to begin with. I want to see what 10 pounds feels like for the 30 minute walk. So without further ado, let's get started. And I'll probably, I'll give you a, a preview of what the setup looks with the book bag and the chest mount. So you can see sort of, you know, what I'm working with. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, so we're getting right into it today with today's walk. Today's walk is a fun walk. And I'm about to explain why to you. The first thing to do is, of course, we're going to put our 30 minute timer. Hopefully you all can see, got a 30 minute timer going. So what is so special about today's walk? Well, like I said earlier in the video, that little spiel that I gave, I'm doing rucksacking today. I think that's how you'd say it. Maybe, I'm, maybe I could say I'm rucking today, but essentially what that means is I have a backpack loaded with 10 extra pounds in hopes that, you know, I can progressively overload my cardio. I think one of the things that's very important to me is being able to be, like you gotta enjoy what you're doing, right? I already like walking. It's a lot of fun for me, I do it every single day. So if there's a way that I can easily overload. Just had to give a second for the car to pass, but if there's an easy way for me to overload an activity that I already enjoy doing, then at least to me, it sounds like it will lead to better success, right? Because if you told me that I needed to completely change my cardio routine to something else to be able to get some new form of gains, I don't know, I'd probably be more hesitant to do it, right? So it's why, it's like the same reason why I hear a lot that if you like a movement in the gym, for example, if you really like, like I love preacher girls for my biceps, I'm just gonna spam preacher curls, you know? As long as I'm working out with intensity, if I'm increasing the weight every single time I go, or at least trying to, to beat my previous weight, what is it that Greg Doucette says, like train harder than last time? So if I'm, if I'm constantly doing that, then it'll make a difference. And that's, that's gonna be all I need, all right? I don't necessarily need to spend so much time optimizing and finding so many different movements to be able to constantly challenge or confuse my muscles. Obviously, probably that's more important to like the intermediate or advanced lifter. I'm, frankly, I don't really know, but I feel like as a beginner, and I still consider myself a beginner because I've never made it past like 
four months of consistent training. So I feel like as a beginner, as long as I'm doing something and I'm doing that thing with intensity, it should be enough. So I will tell you already within the first, it hasn't even been three full minutes, I definitely feel a difference in this extra 10 pounds. You might even hear a difference in the way that I'm talking. At least it sounds to me, I feel like I have to breathe a little deeper, which is good. That means I'm definitely being challenged. So I'm very excited for that because that only means, you know, the more used to this I get, the more I will continue adding weight. And I'm very curious to see, you know, how much weight will I be able to add? Now, one thing I am a little bit cautious of is on one of the websites that I was reading, this lady mentioned how she spent like $300 on one of the rocking backpacks. The rocking backpacks are probably better able to support the weight and not stress any one part of your muscles out. I'm not sure if the way that, you know, you know, I just threw a 10 pound plate in here. It's probably fine because it's 10 pounds, but I hope I'm not adding undue strain on my spine or back because maybe, maybe the plate is placed too far in the bag. Whereas I think a rucksack is a little more even. So, you know, I'm trying to stay tight. I'm trying to keep my core tight. I'm really trying to not let, like I'm trying to keep my posture as good as possible. I'm not trying to lean too far back or too far forward. So we'll see what happens. We'll see how we feel at the end, but I, I definitely feel like I'll notice a big difference. So if anyone else is looking to increase their walking activity, then try it out. Find yourself, you know, get yourself a cheap book bag for 10 pounds. It doesn't have to be that robust of a bag. It doesn't have to be like a military style bag. Find yourself something that works, throw some weight in there and keep walking. You know, and then imagine even the next level like imagine if I start doing, you know, imagine I start jogging with the weight on my back, right? So now we've just doubly overloaded. So it's exciting. I feel like there's a lot of different options with this and really the sky's the limit. Super happy that I actually just got out and did it. Apart from that, today's been a really good day. I've been doing a lot of errands today. Let's see if I can remember exactly what happened so far. So today was our day off or my day off because of the US holiday Veterans Day. And in the morning, you know, in preparation for the dog party that you all probably already know of, if you've been watching my videos, I had my lawn guy come over and cut the grass just to make that look good. I paid him, paid him a little bit extra so you can also remove some, I don't even know what you would call them. There's like these seeds that come off palm trees that are very annoying. and they fall right in front of my main entrance. So I don't want guests to come in and see all that. So I had him remove all the different seeds and all the different palm trees. He raked up all the leaves in the backyard. He mowed the front and the back, back lawn. So had him come over and do that. And then finally, not finally, because if, if that was finally, you would be thinking like, wow, it's only two things you did today. Not that hectic of day. But after that, I took my golden retriever Sawyer to get a haircut and let me, let me talk about this for a second. So golden retrievers are very special dogs, right? So my girlfriend with her dachshund, you know, dachshund's a short haired dog and it's just a lot easier to maintain a dog like that, right? It's smaller, first of all, it doesn't shed. I don't think, I mean, I'm sure there's some special care for a dachshund's coat, but I can't imagine it's probably as difficult as it is for a golden. So I have taken Sawyer to many different groomers in the past to PetSmart and Petco, you know, independent grooming facilities that seem like they're awesome, but in reality, maybe they're not. And man, I have had bad experiences with many of them. An important thing about a golden retriever is you don't, you can't really mess with their coat. You can do a little bit of trimming with scissors, but definitely the top part, or really any hair on the body, you shouldn't really mess with. This is what the groomer told me. And it's sort of something that I've known about for a while. Like I've done my research and I've learned about this. So when I went to today's groomer in Petco, you know, he was telling me like, oh, have you ever noticed that the top of your golden has, you know, his coat is a little bit thin. It's a little bit more rough than like the hair on his chest. And I, I did notice that. And he told me it's because apparently, he told me it's because apparently it's just not good to cut that hair. 
especially when you take them to a place that's like a full full body haircut they're gonna trim all that stuff off so i've gotten sawyer before and he's like completely shaved and he looked terrible because goldens are supposed to be super fluffy and their hair is like wispy you know i guess i don't even know if that's the right word but anyway he told me all about that and he said don't worry i got you and sure enough man when i picked sawyer up i just picked him up like half an hour ago and he looks amazing I mean, this guy did a really, really good job. So, man, from now on, I'm taking Sawyer to this person because they really knew what they were doing. And it just makes such a big difference. And I feel like Sawyer now finally looks like a golden retriever again. I'll, I'll see if I can include him in the video, but he looks awesome. So very excited about that. So that was Petco. That was the whole thing with Sawyer. We're also going to give a shower to Benji later on, too, just to make sure they're tip top for the dog party tomorrow and then what else do we got we were cleaning the entire house today which you know sometimes you move in somewhere and you're like oh yeah like i'll, I'll just clean the house like really quick you know but you, you just it doesn't like you can't clean a house really quick it takes time it takes like three hours maybe like maybe longer you know if you do a really good job if you want your house to actually look good and smell good it takes time and the happy thing something i've been wanting to do for a long time is clean around the refrigerator and i finally did that and i also cleaned around the stove and the refrigerator was literally filthy it was disgusting i just never got around to doing it and today i was like we need to do this like it has to happen now we need to start creating the habit so i moved the refrigerator got in there there's like this product that I, I feel like Hispanics like always use. My girlfriend introduced me to it. It's called Comet. And I mean, Comet is not a sponsor of this video, but if you're looking for something to really clean anything, use Comet. You know, before, like today, when we used it for the refrigerator, because there were some nasty stains under there that were really tough to take out, my guest bathroom, the toilet was filthy. Like, well, not filthy, but <laughs> it had like a mineral stain. And if you look online for how to remove mineral stains, you know, you'll find things like lemon juice and vinegar and all these other types of solutions, but none of them worked. And I tried for months. Then my girlfriend comes one day, she's like, oh, have you tried Comet? I'm like, no, I haven't tried Comet. So she uses Comet and sure enough, it just like erased everything and it looks sparkling new. So highly recommend Comet as a overall just product to clean troublesome stains and marks and spots and anything else really because it's it's very good so man i am sweating more than i ever have before on any of these walks and that's only with 10 pounds like i imagine just with like 20 pounds 40 pounds i don't even know what's really the highest like are people going around rucking with like 100 pounds extra they might be maybe but it's pretty cool i feel like you know if you're if you're walking with 10 extra pounds and you do that for a long time, your heart is going to learn how to pump at a, at a more efficient rate, right? It's gonna become more efficient because you're adding all this extra weight to train it, and then you remove the weight, and then it's like, wow, like walking is so much easier now because it's just minus 10 pounds. And again, just imagine that compounded, you know, 20 pounds, 40 pounds, 60 pounds, etc. So definitely a great thing to progressively overload anyway. Finished cleaning the house. We're pretty much done, just like finishing up with some laundry. And then after that, we're going to pick up, like we ordered, my, well actually my girlfriend wanted to order a custom cake. I think it's called a pavlova. It's like a strawberry cake thing. And a charcuterie board. We ordered it from a local baker. So we'll be going afterwards to pick that up. And then finally, we'll be ending in the grocery store to get everything for tomorrow. We just decided to, you know, we were gonna save some things for the morning, but since it's gonna be a long day tomorrow, I'd rather get everything done tonight so that tomorrow we don't have anything to do and all we have to do is just wake up, you know, enjoy the morning, get some things ready, but at least we'll be home in a clean house with clean dogs. I mean, is there anything better than that? I don't think so. So, what's up, man? All in all, it's looking like a great day. Really looking forward to the dog party tomorrow. Oh, I definitely gotta show, I gotta show you guys Sawyer with his, they gave him a birthday hat. That's gonna be the thumbnail of this video. Sawyer with his birthday hat. 
that's just, I mean, come on. Like, it doesn't get any cuter than that. A golden retriever wearing a birthday hat. And that's the cool thing. They just gave me that for free at the shop, at the groomers. Like, oh, hey, it's your dog's birthday. Like, we're going to give you this for you for free. And I'm sure if I bought that on its own, it's like a really high-quality birthday hat, too. It probably would be like 20 bucks. So I just gave them that in tip to account for that. What's up, man? Anyway, it's been a great day with even better weather. Things are looking up. We're almost approaching, because this would be fall, fall walk six. Right? Yeah, after tomorrow, I guess on Sunday will be the first week that we've walked. So if you followed me since last Sunday, then we would have walked an entire week together. And I am planning on Tuesday to start the Couch to 5K playlist. So on top of normal walking videos, it's gonna be interesting. But actually, let me visit that again, because how long, because I need to actually plan it out, because I need to be able to get a 30 minute normal walking video and also an X minute Couch to 5K video. So I know we did it on Runner's World. Let's look it up here. Okay, so run one minute and walk one minute repeat 10 times so it sounds about like 20 minutes so i'll need 20 extra minutes on tuesday on thursday run two minutes walk four minutes that's six that's 30 and then again 30. so it's gonna be tough i'm gonna need a lot of good planning like i'll need to yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting because i don't really want to make i don't like making the videos at night because the the gopro like the lighting situation you know maybe newer gopro cameras have better low light modes but Although I suppose, like, like if I'm thinking of what's more beneficial, like if you're training for a couch to 5K, you're probably not also watching my video as you're running, right? You're really just using it as probably background noise or something to motivate you. Like the fact that I even uploaded a video at all is your motivator. You're like, oh, if Raphael did it, I should also do it, and I'm going to follow him throughout his journey, and then maybe at the end, I'll also be able to do a 5K. That's really the goal. If anything, what I'll do is I'll have, I'll try to have good audio cues for when I start walking, stop walking, start running, stop running. And I'll also probably try and put up a timer to show the different you know, durations of each segment on the screen. That's probably helpful, you know, helpful information to view. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Whew, man, what a workout. I'm curious to see also how many calories I've burned. Yeah, I was reading about that online. Like, there's not really an accurate way to... Like, I can probably get, like, an Apple Watch to count my calories on this walk, but I'm not sure it would actually be affected by the extra weight. Right? I don't think the Apple Watch has a way of knowing that I'm, like, rucking or adding extra weight on my back. So, I guess we'll just see. Let me again do the usual. I'm going to double-check the camera. Okay. Everything's looking solid. One thing I do wish, this is super random, but when I look at my GoPro from, like if I'm just looking down at my chest, I can't really see the angle. I, I don't really know what you guys are looking at that much. I can, I can see the, the display, the viewport, but if there was like a mount that I can attach to the top of my GoPro, that could act as like a level for me to know if the video you're watching is straight, that'd be nice. Although I just realized when I was on GoPro's website yesterday, I believe the GoPro 12 has something called like horizontal lock. And the example they had was like a, a pilot. They had a pilot flying and doing inversions and you can see whenever it matched up with the horizon, it sort of like locked into place. So I'm curious if maybe that's the solution, right? Um, I'm sure they love to hear that, right? The solution is to upgrade my camera and buy more GoPro stuff. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see. It's been a lot of fun though.
That was a nice little moment of silence. Hopefully you all enjoyed the little bit of music that was playing. Sometimes it's hard to find the music because luckily, so the, the editing software that I use is called Microsoft ClipChamp, it's free. Honestly, it's pretty good for a free like piece of video editing software. The, like the other one I found is called DaVinci Resolve, which they have a free tier, which apparently is really good, but they wanted me to install like 5,000 different things just to be able to get it. So it looks like I have to tie my shoe. So let us do that real quick here. Got shoe tying POV. So yeah, with DaVinci Resolve, like there was a ton of stuff I wanted me to install and you know, I just bought a new computer and I did my best to remove as much bloatware and, and crap, honestly, that I didn't need. So I'm not trying to really install a ton of stuff right now and Microsoft ClipChamp, Honestly, to be fair, it is, it's literally 11 gigabytes. It's so, it's so big. And it probably does install a lot of things under the, the hood. I mean, to be fair, you know what? They probably both install similar things. But what DaVinci Resolve does that ClipChamp doesn't is when you're installing it, it gives you a list of all the different things that it's about to install. So I guess in that regard, it's like they, they, probably, they probably both did the same thing. Let's make sure the camera is nice and straight here. All right. So I was gonna say something I think about Microsoft ClipChamp. Maybe not, oh yeah, they have a lot of music to use and when you pick the music, they'll have sections for like, oh, free to use music, which I'm assuming means that I won't get like copyright, a copyright strike, which so far I haven't. Some of the videos that I have posted, I see something that says copyright from YouTube, but it's just letting me know that, you know, I am using uh, you know, some audio source, but the artist has allowed for me to use it. So I guess I'm safe there, but that's really nice. Sometimes it's hard to find good music though. I mean, they offer a wide selection and honestly, most of them are good. It's just a matter of making sure they're as long as the time that I don't talk. Although I suppose I can always combine multiple songs together. I don't have to have it just be one, but you know, that's just how I am. Again, you know, I, I really can't speak enough about this rucking because it is a game changer. The way that I feel, I just feel, I feel phenomenal, to be honest. I really feel like my heart is working harder and that it will greatly benefit from me doing this exercise, right? One of the most important muscles in the body is one that is often overlooked. But having a healthy heart is very important. Almost finishing our walk here. Let's see how long we have. We have seven minutes and 22 seconds, which is good. I think again, we're doing above average in terms of time. Typically when I make it to this section, it's a little bit later. So we made it here earlier, which is nice. That was super random too. I got a haircut as well today, which it's really important. I'll tell you a little story about that. So. I grew up skateboarding, and because of that, I, I had the typical skater boy hair, you know, that swivel to the right. And I loved it, honestly. I loved my long hair. Got older, I was hoping that I'd be able to keep it. And I, I personally never noticed anything, but I went to the barber, the same barber I go to now, and he was cutting my hair once, and he's like, hey man, you know you're thinning, right? And I'm like, what? And sure enough, he sort of like parted the hair a little bit on the top right. And yeah, my hair was thinning. So pretty much from that day, it's become slowly but surely, you know, how much more can we shave off every single time? So that was somewhat long hair back then. And eventually it is to where it is now, which is, it's a high zero fade. So it's pretty short, it's nearly bald. But you know what, it, it did take me a long time to get used to it. It took me a long time to really like it. But now I feel like it just suits me so well. And the nice thing about short hair is, and not to sound lazy or anything, but you don't have to maintain it. And you just look very, I like, look, I like the sharp look that it gives me, you know? It just makes me look clean. And I do enjoy that. Now, would I mind if I had my long hair still? Probably not. 
I love it, honestly. But I also do love, you know, the hair that I have now, my short hair. And yeah, actually, you guys, you guys already saw it on the pre-video that I did. Yeah, I, I literally took that directly after getting a haircut. Like, I came home and was like, oh, let me film this now that I have some time. Because that was in between me and getting my haircut and taking Sawyer to his grooming. I was like, yeah, just let me, let me just work on this now, get it out of the way, do my walk later. And yeah, that barber, I've been with that barber for, I honestly, probably more than two years. He's an awesome barber. And I'll probably continue going to him. He's Brazilian. He's pretty cool. And it's cool because I've seen him grow his business. You know, he has his own hair studio now with his own branding, his own products. So it's also really cool to, you know, I found this guy randomly on Google, just like based on reviews. And now look how far he's gotten, you know, look how far he's made it. And he's pretty popular. Like if you don't, I normally have to book like a couple days in advance. There's no way I'm ever gonna get something same day. And if I try to book it the day before, I'll probably get some crappy times. So people, people do go to him. He's, he's booked often. So that's a sign of someone that's, you know, wanted in, in the industry. Gonna finish up strong here. I can feel the muscles in my legs working significantly more than they would without the 10 pounds. I feel my upper back. I don't feel any pains though, which is good. But again, just imagine the more weight I add, the more demand it puts on my heart, my legs, my back, my posture, you know, my, my, my spine. Like good, good stress, I would say. Enough stress to actually build strength and get that trunk. I think one thing I also like about rucking is like, well, I don't know, maybe that sounds like, you know, oh, I'm trying to pick something that's not as widely, you know, or as popular, but it's cool that I just ended up in something that isn't as popular as, I don't know, probably when most people think about doing cardio, they'll think about getting on a bike or doing running but walking with weights, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just talking, talking shite, but it's a lot of fun. I'm not gonna do a post-workout video today. Today there is no strength training. I'll probably get to do a full body on Sunday at my actual commercial gym. I may put a video after, but if you do like those post-walk workout videos in the home gym, you can expect for those to return on Monday. Monday, Monday I definitely need to do back. I'm, I've been neglecting my back hard. I haven't done lat pull downs in a long time. I haven't done anything. So I, I really need to get back in the gym and start hitting it. I focus a lot on everything else. I guess it's good. Most people have problems hitting their legs. I'm having an issue hitting my back. So I'm definitely gonna start with chest and back on Monday and really, really emphasize the back. Make sure that I'm getting some good pumps in got to grow that thick back, you know? All right, let's do another time check here. A minute 57. Yeah, tomorrow's video will be early because since I do have that party, again, I think, I think yesterday when I said that today I'd record early, I meant that I'd record early on Saturday. So Saturday I'll wake up, I'll do the video, I may have it uploaded before, you know, earlier than the normal time, but I don't want to promise anything. I think now I'm in a pretty good time of, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm consistently uploading from like seven to 9 p.m. Eastern time. So, you know, if I'm lucky, maybe the video will go out tomorrow, like around 12 p.m. Eastern time, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily count on it because, you know, it's gonna be a busy day. I'll definitely record the video, and that'll be nice because we'll, we'll have a morning walk, which we've never done as of yet. And then I'll probably upload it. You know, I'll do my editing, and I'll upload it later on in the night. So, really, really feeling this. After this walk, I'll show you guys what my setup looks like. I just want to show you guys, like, the bag I'm using. You already know what the chest mounts, you know, how the chest mount looks, but just to show you what the whole setup looks like. I'm sure you can imagine, I mean, I'm literally just wearing a backpack, but 
I think it's good to show. Get involved, you know, let me know if you end up doing something similar and let me know if you liked it. I'm sure there's gonna be some of you that don't and there's gonna be some of you that will. So if you tried it out, adding some weight to a backpack and walking, let me know. Excited to continue. This is probably gonna be what I do from now on, like always. I will probably never go back to non-weighted walks. I mean, I may, maybe I should take a break once or twice in the week, but then again, maybe I shouldn't. I guess we'll find out. So anyway, I'll see you guys in the next section. I'll give you guys a little preview of what it looks like, and I'll probably show you what Sawyer looks like after his bath, so I'll see you guys in a moment. All right, so I quickly wanted to show you guys what the setup looks like. So I have the chest mount, like I always have, and then here's the bag that I'm wearing right here. So I have a 10 pound plate loaded up into the bag, just wearing it. So as I'm wearing this, I'm trying to keep tight. You know, I don't wanna to lean too far forward or definitely not lean too far back. Just trying to stay straight and really engage that posture. And I'm telling you, it's, it's a completely different workout. I'm sweatier, I feel more athletic. You know, I can feel it in my shoulders, probably just due to the actual straps pressing up against the shoulders or pushing down on the shoulders. My legs feel great. So like I said, I'm probably not gonna go back to doing unweighted walks but maybe it might be good just to take a break, maybe like once a week without the weight, just to see how it goes. And let us now show you the most important part, which is my dog. Give me one second here. And this is the birthday dog. And you can see Benji's very excited for him. 